All right, entropy. The big E. One of the most frightening words in physics. I mean, if you want to turn people off at a party, start talking about entropy. This is probably why I don't get invited to a lot of parties. Now, entropy. Entropy is a concept that was developed in the mid-1800s to describe the amount of disorder in a system. I know that's a very, very loose definition. There's there's an actual mathematical de definition. We're going to dig into that in a little bit in today's video. But entropy itself, I just want you to think of, is a measure, a measure, a way of, of keeping track of the amount of disorder in a system. In the second law of thermodynamics says that entropy must go up. If you have a closed system, it's cut off, it's not receiving any energy, then entropy must go up. The system must move from disorder to disorder. And we think this is maybe somehow linked to the arrow of time. The reason there's a past is different from the future is because systems must move from disorder to order. I keep flipping those around. Why do I do this? Systems must go from order to disorder. Systems go from from the past into the future. So, okay, how, but why? Why must systems go from order to disorder? They didn't have to, but why? Like if entropy, if the second law demands this, why is the second law of thermodynamics true? And I'm going to give you an example. Entropy is a way of measuring disorder. It's, it's, it's a way of, of counting. It's a way of counting. If, if I have a box full of particles, a gas, you know, whatever, I just have some system that I'm looking at, and there's some temperature associated with that system. I stick my thermometer in, it might probe thermometer, okay, it's uh, 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, great. What does that mean? It means that the particles, the gas particles inside that box have a certain average velocity. You know, they're all wiggling and jiggling all over the place. Let's say I were to freeze frame that just for a moment, just take a snapshot. And I captured all these particles in, in mid motion. What if I were to take two of these particles and just swap them? You know, when no one was looking, I just swapped, swapped them around. You wouldn't notice, right? You wouldn't know because these particles are identical. You can't tell if this is that particle A and particle B is, is this particle B and that's particle A. You can't tell. So you can swap them around with no change. And in fact, you can move them around a little bit. You can you can pick up this this one and tweak it. Just bring it up over here, just a little bit, just a little bit, and the temperature wouldn't change. You can rearrange the system. And I'm moving my hands all like kung fu style for some reason. You can rearrange the system without affecting the temperature or any other thing that you would measure. The you know the pressure or anything like that. The number of ways you can rearrange the system without affecting things like temperature and pressure is the entropy. That is the definition of the entropy. If I can keep this temperature but start rearranging, it's like, okay, here's, here's one way, two ways, three ways, four ways, five ways, six ways, seven ways. And you keep track and you add up all those different ways, that is the entropy. Now, why must entropy go up? Why must disorder go up? Because there are so many more ways for a disordered state to exist than an ordered state while maintaining the same pressure and all the other thermodynamic measurements and observables. I like using the example of, of a room. Let's say you clean your room. Place for everything, everything is placed. It's spotless totally organized, ideal, platonic ideal of a room. All right. It's all set. How many ways can that room be clean? One. There's only one way for that room to be clean. How many ways are there for the room to be messy? Like countless ways, countless ways. You, you leave a sock out. There's one way. You, you, you have a pen over there. There's another way. There's a, there's a little smudge of dirt. There's another way. Like uh, two socks out. You have three, three socks out. There's, you just, just count up all the possible ways to have a messy room. 
it's overwhelming. It's, it's some gigantic number. There's so many ways to have a messy room. There's only one way to have a clean room. Only one way to have an organized room. So let's imagine if a tornado happened inside of your room and totally reorganized everything. If you opened up that door after the tornado hit your room, would you expect to see a messy room or a clean room? A dirty room or an organized room? Which would you expect to see? You would expect to see a messy room. You'd expect to see a disorganized room. Because there's only one way for it to be clean, but many, 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 many ways for it to be disorganized. Many ways for it to be chaotic. Many ways for it to be disordered. Even though it's not impossible, that tornado could have came in, rearranged everything, and put everything in just the right spot. Man, one in a quadrillion chance of encountering a perfectly clean and organized room. But the statistics are not in your favor. The statistics aren't there. There There's so many more ways to have disorder than order. So systems like a gas in a bottle or the air in this room or a ball rolling down a hill or, or anything that depend on so many countless tiny little interactions between the microscopic bits the number of ways it can be in a disordered state are always going to be so much greater. And it, like ridiculously greater. Like so much so we, you can hardly even write this down than an ordered state. And that's why entropy always goes up. Because if you have a system and it's doing its little microscopic system things, if you start it in an ordered state, there are just so many more opportunities to be disordered. So many more random arrangements of particles that can be disordered rather than ordered. So the entropy must go up. It must. So is that it? Is that why there is a flow of time? Because entropy must go up because there's so many more ways for states to be chaotic and disordered than ordered? Maybe. Like I said before, this is our, this is our best guess. It's our best guess, but it leads to a very tricky question. If you're going to say that this is the arrow of time because entropy, because of the statistical thing, okay, why? Was our universe 13.8 billion years ago in the early days of the Big Bang, why did it start with such low entropy? Why did it start in a state that let us slowly get disordered in such a way that we could have stars, multiple generations, planets, life. How do we start in that, what appears to be a very special state? Got nothing. Got nothing. Well, I mean, there are some ideas out there, but that's another video. I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed this. Go to patreon.com slash PM to help support this show and all my education and outreach. And you can also like, share, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out another video. Have some fun on the channel. Feel free to ask me questions below, and I'll see you next time. Now clean your room.